This might be the coolest update in Minecraft. For a bit of context, I made a super flat world in version 1.1. With each episode, the world updates. But in each update, some things are added to the world and some things are removed. Previously, I made a base, got an enchanting table, and made a villager farm. This is what the villager farms look like in old Minecraft. Look, I know it's weird, but lots of things in this version are weird. <laughs> but this farm originally didn't work because in 1.1, villagers couldn't breed. But now, in version 1.1, Point two, they can. So they should start to breed. Oh my gosh, already! Oh, that's perfect! After a bit of waiting, there were finally enough villagers for an iron golem to spawn. <gasps> is that what I think it is? Yes! Oh my gosh, an iron golem! Hey, there we go. This really was a massive step for me. Before, the only way to get iron was from blacksmith chests in villages. There were often thousands of blocks away from each other. But now, with a renewable source of iron, it meant I could use my iron on tools without feeling guilty, like I was wasting them. Ah, oh, this is so much better being able to craft with iron now. However, I did notice that there were lots of villagers outside the villager farm. Normally, this wouldn't have been an issue, but they were claiming the doors around the villager farm. Now, I've got to go a bit technical here, but the way these old villager farms work is that every single one of these doors represents an empty house. Each villager can claim one house. The villagers will breed and repopulate until there are no empty houses left. It's pretty simple, but those outsiders were claiming the doors, meaning the inside villagers completely stopped breeding. This was an issue, and I knew just how to solve it. <laughs> I didn't feel too bad. You know, breeding is the only thing villagers can do in this version of Minecraft. I mean, they don't trade, they don't make a sound when you hit them, or make that huh sound. Yeah, you guys are kind of useless, really. You don't oh, okay, <laughs> I'll leave you to it. <laughs> okay. Now, I did have the idea of making an iron golem farm, a bit like one of these, but hoppers weren't added to the game yet. So I'm gonna have to wait until later. But iron golems weren't the only thing added to Minecraft in version 1.2. Jungles were added, which don't spawn here. Redstone lamps were also added, but we can't get redstone yet. Chiseled stone bricks were added, only in creative mode. Look, okay, there really wasn't much added in this version. I had even previously made a place to showcase all the blocks available in the game, and I planned that each update I would add to it. But there's nothing I can do to it this time, it sucks! <laughs> but, while there may not be anything added to the game, there is something that will be removed. This is the last version where the petrified oak slab is obtainable. So, you might ask, what is the petrified oak slab? Well, it's a block that looks identical to an oak slab, but it cannot catch on fire. No matter what you do, believe me, I've tried, it won't burn. And you have to use a pickaxe to mine it. Using an axe does nothing. Why is it like this? I have no idea. But, because this is the last version that they are obtainable, I obviously want as many as I can get. So, I spent the next four hours collecting as many as I could. Technically, I could have collected some when I was back in version 1.1, but in 1.1, it cost three planks for three slabs, but in this version, it's three planks for six slabs. And eventually, I got 23,518 slabs. Yeah, that should be enough. <laughs> so far, I've only been in version 1.2.1, but there were actually four other versions in 1.2, and I was kind of curious to see what those other versions had to offer. Version 1.2.2, was a little black luster. It just fixed three bugs. That's it. Version 1.2.3 was a bit more interesting because this version fixed four bugs. Oh yeah. But to me, version 1.2.3 was a bit special because this was the version that was released when Stampy Longhead started his Minecraft world. And it was his videos that really got me into playing Minecraft. But there was one video, one build that he did right at the start of the world that I really liked. And that was a lighthouse. Looking back, it wasn't a particularly amazing build, but it was something that I had never thought of building before. And it was that realisation that I could do anything, build anything I wanted to, and that's what made Minecraft such a great game to me. And I loved this lighthouse so much that in every world I joined, I would always try to build one. And I plan on building another lighthouse in this world too. 
but I need a place to build it first. So I collected a ton of dirt and made outlines for where the hills will be. And I should say, my overall plan with this world is to have land surrounding all the way around this central island, with the lighthouse somewhere by the coast. Why? Well, I don't know, I think that would look cool. But for now, I'm just working on this little part of the landscape. All I knew was that I wanted the lighthouse to be on top of a cliff overlooking the ocean. Then I wanted the surrounding area to be a bit more flat, a bit like a plains biome. Okay, that's a good chunk done. That only took half an hour to make. That's not that bad, actually. Eventually, I do want to add in some massive mountains, you know, really make this area look cool, but that's gonna be for, <laughs> that's gonna be for another day. I also connected a way for the grass to spread over, because just leaving it as dirt it is kind of ugly. But while I wait for that to spread, I got started with the cliffs. I had to spend quite a bit of time actually planning how I want the cliffs to look. For whatever reason, making cliffs is a really difficult thing for me in this game. All I knew was that I would need a lot of stone. I was able to balance a book on top of my mouse to keep mining. Okay, don't judge me. I know it's very janky, but it worked, okay? I built up the cliffs and had so much stone left over. Like, this is way too much. Now, I will be honest, this cliff does look a little goofy. I did say I was bad at making cliffs, but I figured once I had some vines and leaves, I could kind of cover up this mess and make it look nicer. However, before I do any decorations or trees or paths or anything like that, I need to build the lighthouse I wanted first. For the most part, it was pretty simple. The only thing I didn't have was glass, and if you have a very, very thorough look around, there is a significant lack of sand, making glass impossible to get. It's only until 1.14 when the wandering trader shows up that we can get sand to smelt into glass, but until then, there's no way to get it, meaning I'm gonna have to leave the top of the lighthouse like this, which, you know, does look a bit stupid, I can't lie, but when I do get glass, which will happen one day, I can go round and fix it all up later. But the lighthouse isn't done yet, I still have the interior to do, which normally stumps me, like I'm really bad at interiors. <laughs> Thankfully though, I can look back and see what Stampy did with his lighthouse, and he turned it into an art gallery, so I did the same thing. Alright, that's the lighthouse done. I'm actually really happy with it. Now, I did kind of copy what Stampy did with an art gallery as the interior for the lighthouse, and I think it's okay. I tried to get at least one of every small painting in the lighthouse, and I think I got all of them, but it is a bit difficult to make sure, because there are quite a few. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it. I think it's good. At this point, I had noticed that all of the grass had grown over, which made it a pretty good time to decorate the area with paths, trees, and random mini rock things on the land. I also put some rocks in the ocean by the cliff too to make it look a bit more cliffy, and finally added some vines drooping around the lighthouse and over the cliff edge, kind of giving the lighthouse an old and worn down vibe to it. Ah, oh, this looks cool. It actually looks so cool. To me, doing stuff like this is what really makes the area feel complete. Okay, I think that's this area done. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna put here at the moment. I know I want it to be kind of plainsy, but I don't know how to make it plains-like yet. So I'm gonna leave it for now. Similarly, I know I want this to be beachy and there's no way to get sand. So at the moment, it's gonna look kind of weird. But this is the best I can come up with so far. And then there's the lighthouse. It looks so cool. I love, why are you bothering me? I love how red it is. Like, it contrasts the green so nicely. What does it look like from a distance? What does it look like from the island? I bet that looks good. In version 1.1, I made this little island. It's got a little dock, a farm, and my house. And I'm really curious to see what the lighthouse looks like from here. Ah, oh, that looks really cool. Like, the, the lighthouse stands out so well. It really is so vibrant. I love it. Okay, I'm very happy with this. I like it very much. Throughout all of this, there were still two more versions in 1.2 that I haven't even tried yet. So, I updated to version 1.2. 1.2.4, which fixed 25 bugs. This is insane. How are there this many bugs in the game? The other thing that was changed in this version was that wool now looks more boring. <sighs> In the final version, 1.2.5, they fixed another 14 bugs! What is going on with this game? The only notable thing to mention in 1.2.5 is that this is the exact version that Mogswamp started his super flat world in. That's it, there, there isn't really too much else to say about this version, I don't know. <laughs> However, this build might look good, the lighthouse might be nostalgic, but there is something missing. With every lighthouse, there has to be a ship. 
and I could make this ship out of the petrified oak slabs we got earlier. Like, how cool would that be? I actually got this idea from a comment in a stream. This person is a genius. <laughs> Only issue, upside down stairs and slabs aren't a thing. So look, if I try to place a slab on this top part of the block here, nope, it goes to the bottom. No matter what I try, it will always be a bottom facing slab, which is kind of annoying. Similar principle with stairs. I try and place a stair on this top bit here, Nope, it looks like this. No matter what I try, it will always be a bottom heavy stair block. This means that designing a realistic looking ship without it being blocky is gonna be tough. But once I got a design I liked, it was pretty smooth sailing building it in the world. Bam, there we go. I think that's the ship done. The sail does look a bit goofy, but I think further away, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, that's cool. It looks alright, I think. This was so cool. I was so happy with it. But then I got another comment from a viewer. Could you build this ship on lava? I mean, think about it. This is made from petrified oak slabs. They may look like oak, but as I said earlier, it cannot catch on fire. And if I were to build this, it would look so unbelievably strange. Yeah, that... That really does look weird, <laughs> but there are still some things that I have got planned for 1.3. Throughout all of this, villagers haven't been able to trade, but in 1.3, trading is added. So I've been building up a wheat farm because one of the trades that they can have is to buy wheat for emeralds. So I've been stockpiling a ton of wheat kind of in the background, and hopefully that will set me in good motion for the start of the next version. And can I just say, I am so happy with this world so far, like it looks so cool. I love the ship and the lighthouse as well, like it, it, it is cool, I really like it. Now, I will be honest, the actual ocean floor does look a bit crap. You can see over there where I built the ship, I've had to dig around so you can actually see the full ship. Eventually though, I will destroy all of this dirt and actually make it look like an ocean, because it does look quite bad as it is right now, but that is definitely not going to happen today, oh my gosh. But I was going through some of the comments from the last video, and oh my gosh, they were so kind. It was so nice going through them all, but I did get one comment that said, will you ever return to your own normal super flat world? Now, if you don't know, I did have a super flat world, and those old videos are still on my channel, but I am going to be leaving that series just because I didn't really find it that fun, and starting again like this I think is more interesting, but that's mainly because I had so much fun in the last video that I wanted to turn into a series. And that's why at the end of the last episode, I let all the pigs and sheep out of their pen because I figured I wasn't going to be coming back here. Like, I only planned on recording one video on this world, but I had so much fun in that last episode that I just had to come back. And I'm so glad I did. Yeah, it's about to be night, but I am so happy with this world. Like, it looks so cool. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like when everything's all done. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be nice.